Write A, which is equal to 3, 4, 1, 2, as a product of elementary matrices. Well, let's understand the question first. What is an elementary matrix? Well, an elementary matrix is a matrix that's designed to do an elementary row operation. If I have a matrix B, and I want to do a row operation, then I can multiply it on the left by an elementary matrix, maybe E1. And if I want to do another row operation on the result, then I multiply on the left by yet another elementary row uh, matrix, and I continue doing that until I get to wherever it is that I wanted to go. So I want to write A as a product of elementary matrices. So what I would like to do is I would like to write A is equal to a product of elementary matrices. And since we you always multiply elementary matrices on the left, um, I'll do them uh, from right to left. So we'd like to write it as something like E1, E2, E3, and I have no idea how many of them there are, so up to EK. That's what we'd like to do, where all of those E's are elementary matrices. So before we actually figure out how to do that, let's think about what it means for A to be a product of elementary matrices. If I multiplied all of these elementary matrices by matrix B, that would be the same as multiplying A by the matrix B. So if I put B in on both sides of this equation, and multiplying B by all of these elementary row uh, matrices here, has the effect of doing all of those row operations in turn on the matrix B. So multiplying A by B has the effect of doing all of these elementary row operations in turn in this order from right to left um, on B. So that means that one way of um, calculating A times B would be to do the row operations which might be quite useful to us. But this doesn't actually help us figure out um, what a is as a product of elementary matrices. But actually it does, because if I use B as, my as the identity matrix, like this, then I get AI here, which of course is just A. And on the right hand side here I get all these elementary row, uh, all these elementary matrices multiplied by I, which means that to get A all I have to do is multiply by these elementary matrices, which means all I have to do is perform the elementary row operations that they represent. So now this tells me how to write A as a product of elementary matrices. I need to start with the identity and figure out the row operations that will turn the identity into A. Of course, I don't know how to do that. What I know how to do is start with A and do row operations to get to the identity because that's Gauss-Jordan elimination, ordinary everyday row reduction. But perhaps if I can figure out the row operations that take A and get me to I, if I can figure out the row operations that go this way, then perhaps I might be able to figure out the row operations that go this way. So I think what I'll do is I will row reduce A. So here's my matrix A. It's 3, 4, 1, 2. And I would like to do row operations to get to the identity. No idea how many I'm going to need, but let's start here. So. Uh, to do ordinary row reduction, I look for how I can make the first column of the identity here. So I'd like this to be 1, 0. So I want a 1 here. I don't have a 1 there, I have a 3, but there is a 1 here. So if I swap my rows, I'll get a 1 into the correct position. So my new row 1 and row 2 is my old row 2 and row 1. That's how I write a row swap. So that would produce 1, 2, 3, 4. Excellent. So now I want uh, an identity column here. I've already got a 1 in the correct spot. I want a 0 here. 
So to do that, I would subtract 3 of row 1 from row 2. So my new row 2 is row 2 take 3 of row 1. So didn't change row 1. Row 2 take 3 of row 1 would produce 3 minus 3 times 1 is 0. 4 minus 3 times 2 would be 4 minus 6, which is negative 2. OK. So now let's have a look. I've got uh, my column of the identity here where I want it. So I move on and focus on the next column. And I would like there to be a 1 here and a 0 here. Well, usually you produce the 1 first by dividing by uh, negative 2, but I can produce the 0 here now with slightly less work by doing a row operation. So let's do that now. My new row 1 would be row 1 plus row 2. And so that would give me, haven't changed row 2, 1 plus 0 is 1, 2 plus negative 2 is 0. So I'm almost there. Still looking for the second column of the identity here. I've got a 0 in the right spot. Let's put a 1 here. So I divide by minus 2. So my new row 2 is minus a half of row 2. And that would give me 1, 0 here because I haven't changed the top row. And row 2 has become 0, 1. So I'm at the identity now. I can stop. So I have, by row operations, figured out how to get from A to the identity. My first row operation here turns A into this matrix. And my second row operation here turns the second matrix into the third matrix. And my third row operation here turns the third matrix into the fourth matrix. And my fourth row operation here turns the fourth matrix into the identity. Now I actually don't want to go that way. I want to go up instead of down and figure out the row operations that would start at the identity and work my way up to A. So let's figure out how to do that. First, I want to figure out how to go from here to here. Now I have a row operation that goes down. I want the matching row operation that goes up. So instead of dividing by minus 2, I should multiply by minus 2 uh, because that's the opposite. So my inverse row operation is, so my inverse is that my new row 2 should be minus 2 of my old row 2. And that row operation, there we go, is equal to minus 2 of row 2. That row operation, if we have a look closely at it, here, will go from here to here because multiplying row 2 by minus 2 will produce from here 0 minus 2. OK, well, now we want to go from here to here. So we need to do the op opposite of this row operation just here. So let's find the inverse of that row operation. Inverse. Well, instead of um, adding row 2, I should subtract row 2. So my new row 1 should be row 1 minus row 2. And that row operation will go up from here to here. Well, next I want to go from here to here. And my this row operation goes down. Uh, from here to here, so I just need the inverse of that. So the inverse would be, uh, instead of subtracting 3 of row 1, I should add 3 of row 1. So my new row 2 is row 2 plus 3 of row 1. Excellent. And I've got one step to go to get from the identity to A, is to go from here to A. And I've got a row operation that goes down. I just need its inverse to figure out how to go up the inverse of this one. Well, the opposite of swapping would be swapping again, because that would put you back to where you started. So my new row 2 and row 1 
Here's my old row 1 and row 2. So these here and here and here and here, these are the row operations that go from I to A. And I need the elementary matrices that go with those row operations. So let me write those down. So first let's do this one. New row 2 is minus 2 of row 2. Well that matrix would be... Um, well how do you figure out an elementary matrix? It's all well and good to say it produces the row operation but what do we do to find it? Well the actual definition of an elementary matrix in my book is that it's a matrix that's produced by doing a row operation on the identity. So what we need to do is start with the correct size identity matrix and it should be a 2 by 2 matrix since we've got um, a 2 by 2 for A. So 1001 0, 0, 1. and that matrix um, I need to do this row operation on. So my row operation is uh, my new row 2 is minus 2 of my old row 2 so I get row 2 of my identity and I do the row operation on it. So I should have minus 2 instead of 1 in that spot just there. Like that. Excellent, that's the elementary ma row matrix that goes with that elementary row operation. Let's move on to the next one. So again I start with the identity and I do the row operation on the identity. So my row operation is row 1 minus row 2 so I take my row 1 just here and I subtract row 2 so 1 minus 0 is 1 and 0 minus 1 is minus 1 like that. So that one's done. Let's move on to the next one. Just make my box a bit bigger. So again we start with the identity and we do that row operation on the identity. So that row operation is my new row 2 is row 2 plus 3 of row 1. So my new row 2 should be row 2 plus 3 of row 1. 0 plus 3 times 1 would be 3 and 1 plus 3 times 0 is still 1 so that's the elementary row matrix that goes with that elementary row operation and finally I've got one left here again we start with the identity matrix and we perform the row operation and the row operation is to swap row 1 and row 2 so my elementary matrix would in fact be 0, 1, 1, 0. So there are my four elementary matrices. And now let's figure out how to write A as the product of these elementary matrices. So we'll have a look at our diagram over here and we'll start from the bottom with the identity matrix. So we ba began with the identity matrix. I may actually just move that over a little. We began with the identity matrix. And then we did a row operation to go from here to here. And that row operation is this row operation here. And its elementary matrix is this. So in order to, to do that elementary row operation, we just multiply on the left by the elementary matrix. Like that. And next we went from here to here. And the elementary row operation that did that was this. And its elementary matrix is here. So in order to produce the elementary row operation, we just multiply on the left by the matrix. So 1 minus 1, 0, 1. Alright. And next we went from here to here. And to do that we did this row operation here and its elementary matrix is here. So in order to do the row operation we multiply on the left by the elementary matrix 
like that. And then finally, we went from here to here. And to do that, we, might, we did this row operation. And to perform that row operation, we just multiply by this matrix. So uh, 0, 1, 1, 0. And after we did all of those row operations, we ended up here at A. So A is equal to the product of those matrices. And since there's an identity on the end, which won't change the answer, we can rub that out. And there we have it. A is written as a product of elementary matrices. And that's the end of the problem.